for doing this. So I'm glad we're finally doing it. Um, just some grand rules because I know this is a large group. Um, just some meeting. Brenda, I, I think you may want to restart because the recording started in the middle of your sentence. Oh, darn. Now I have to do my pitch again. Okay. <laughs> Uh, welcome everyone to our first uh, public K-Native steering meeting. This is our first time doing it, so thank you all for joining. Uh, this is a pretty large group, so just a reminder about meeting etiquette and everything. Um, if you have something to add, um, I'll do my best to kind of moderate the conversation here, but if you have something to add, just throw it in the chat and we can just make sure that uh, your comments and questions are addressed. Um, yeah, this is our first time, uh, so th this is a large group, so just be mindful about the time and space you're taking up, just because I know a lot of people probably want to speak up and ask questions and everything, so we're going to do our best here. Alrighty. Um, shall we kick us off? Let me find the agenda doc. Um, I can po post it in the chat, but I know uh, there's agenda items already on here. So maybe we can get started with that. That's the agenda doc. First item, I believe, is from Paul. Um, so the the item that I put onto the agenda is for a proposal that uh, I put into a PR, but it is from uh, it is from myself and Brenda and Michael um, <clears throat> as members of the steering committee, but it's not from the steering committee. Um, let's see, uh, hold on, I need my second screen, which is off camera. <laughs> um, I think that, uh, I think we opened it uh, about exactly a week ago. And I saw that many of you have had comments about it, uh, but I wanted to contextualize the key points uh, of it for the recording and for folks that may not have heard it. Um, it's, uh, <clears throat> I don't remember how many lines are in the PR, uh, but uh, we won't include every detail here, just five key points, which is um, that the proposal is for steering seats being held by individuals as opposed to by vendors. Um, those individuals are elected by the community and are uh, from the community. No vendor majority on steering. Uh, and the seven seats of steering will be five contributor seats, two end user seats. Uh, and then finally, that there's a transition time to, uh, there's a transition time to this end state uh, with the idea that we, uh, that we agree on the dates that we're going to get there now. Uh, and Max, the, the hair has gone the way of 2020, buddy. It's, uh, it's a metaphor there right on top of my head. So uh, I wanted to, uh, uh, now that we've done that, like I'm just very curious to hear uh, if there's any community input about uh, the, the parts of that proposal. Uh, Paul, just for the notes, can you restate your fourth key point? Because I missed that. A sure thing. Uh, sorry, maybe the audio came through a little muddled. The fourth point was, uh, that there will be seven, sorry, there are seven seats on steering and that the proposal is for five of those to be uh, to, for contributors, people that help to build the project and the other two um, are for end users. So uh, for example, an end user uh, is somebody that works for a company that consumes the project rather than sells a product based around it. So there's, there's been a fair amount of discussion on, uh, on the details of, of what those things mean. I'm curious uh, for the folks that are, that are not on the steering committee that are here with us today, like um, any, any reactions to parts of that proposal? I like the, the thrust of it. And um, you know, all of my feedback has basically just been nitpicking, uh, but I do, like, I do like the way it's going. And thanks, 
Jacques, for your uh, your suggestions and uh, and feedback. It's appreciated. I think the gist of making steering committee members, people who have a skin in the game and people who the community know by name and by face and by actual contribution is very beneficial for us and it makes a lot of sense and it will also help the steering committee when they try to steer difficult conversations because the folks involved are actually know who is talking about and there is a good level of trust coming behind it so i would really like if there are comments or changes that would show up at some point to that i would um, urge folks to focus on this never changing like i, I don't want the steering committee to to go back to a mode where we don't even we're not aware or in contact about them i also remembered another question that i had in mind which was i saw in a previous document which was i think there were two different opinions of whether the steering committee work is advisory and the toc is the one who's actually doing most of the uh, most of the decisions or Personally, I was seeing it that a steering committee has uh, a higher strategic role in the uh, project while TOC is more involved in the technical and cross projects, uh, tactical decisions or something. So can you clarify more on this advisory versus um, more involved in strategic? So I, th I, think, I think that's a good question. Um, the, and, and there was a suggestion also from Doug, Doug, I don't know if you're on, uh, about, about potentially collapsing the, or combining rather the steering committee and, and TOC. Doug, did you have anything to say about that? No, I mean, basically I was just asking the question that you just said, yeah, should we look at the combine them? Cause I'm not, I'm not sure I see the need for two separate groups within the organization. Because um, then you have to answer questions of, you know, is one above the other, is one advisory versus not, and they kind of look like they do similar things to me. Um, but to be honest, I haven't had a chance to follow up on any commentary on my question since then. One, one, alternative, yeah. to that, one alternative to that might be to um, consider situ certain situations where, you know, it, it is not necessarily a steering responsibility or a TOC responsibility, but a joint responsibility. Um, but I think, you know, one of, one of my concerns is, um, you know, that the sort of scope of what QC focuses on versus what steering focus on, while also probably somewhat nebulous, I think is uh, pretty different. And I think, you know, caters to uh, different folks with different interests. Um, and uh, so I, I think that if it were one body, I, I would want to make sure that we had sort of the right collection of sort of backgrounds and skills and whatnot. And, you know, I, I don't know. I like to make sort of money ball analogies, but, um, you know, it's, it's sort of like, I don't know if everyone's seen the movie or read the book Moneyball, but, um, you know, making sure we have a good sort of um, collection of skills sort of to bear on some of these decisions, right? Um, uh, I think having the, the sort of separate groups uh, makes sense for a lot of them. Yeah, I, I actually I, liked the feedback you, you shared, Doug. Um, I, I think for me right now, my, my primary focus is more around like mechanics, but I think this is definitely like an interesting topic to explore down the road. Um, that's just kind of my, my two cents. I, I sort of heard uh, one Ville maybe about to say something. Well, I was about to mumble something. But yeah, um, uh, having been on the TLC and, and having seen what some of the uh, SC conversations happen early on and so forth and everything else, um, while you might argue that I don't even have the technical chops, I definitely don't have the skill set that is necessary to be participating in the steering, uh, nor necessarily the interest there as well. And I think that um, it would be, I would, I would propose <laughs> um, that 
that we address the SC composition first, uh, because I know it's been talked about for uh, quite a long time, and folks have expressed some concerns about it. And then, um, then we can go and tackle the second part to go ahead and figure out if there is indeed overlap or whatever. But that's just my personal experience, and um, and just wanted to share. Yeah, I I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, any other any other thoughts on uh, the generalities? Sorry, I move around. I realize I've actually got my camera turned on now, but uh, I still move around. Um, yeah. Uh, any any other comments that folks have about the the generalities, key points of the proposal? Is it is it the d direction you want things to go? Do folks want things to be different? Ahmed has a question in chat. I mean, would you care to 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 just say that question on the audio? Yeah, yeah. Uh, basically, I wanted to know the context because it was a little bit confusing for me to see that there are kind of like two different opinions about the essence of the steering committee, whether it's sort of advisory or it's actual steering. So I wanted to know, yeah, what what's what's the context? What's the background? That, that since this is the first public meeting. Um, since, so that I can make sure that I'm at, like, that we've got the, the question fully understood, do you think you could explain what the, the difference between those two flavors would mean to you? So, yeah, so I, I remember a couple of times when you were discussing um, whether something is considered a part of K-Native or not, or, par, or it's a core or not core, and at such discussions, I believe even the TOC were saying this should be a steering level discussion because on, on the steering level, you're taking in, in, in mind that the, the, the actual scoping of the project that also definitely includes the vendor's interest and the, 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 the longer term um, strategy of the project itself. If it was advisory, I would believe that a TOC would have acted differently and would have said, let's hear opinions, but then we will, we are the people who would the final say in this. I think these are two different modes totally because at some points for, it was very clear, this is a steering committee decision. And if people say now, no, that was only advisory, it would have been totally different in my opinion. So my recollection of, uh, Something Tomas said during one of the, you know, TOC joint steering meetings that we have um, was that effectively for gaps in sort of definitive ownership, it fell back on steering. That steering sort of backstopped decision decision making gaps in the government's governance documentation. Is that consistent with what other folks remember? I got a little distracted by Doug's comment in the chat, Matt. Could you just repeat that? So my recollection was that Tomas said something, I don't remember the exact wording, uh, along the lines of that steering existed to sort of backstop all decision-making gaps in our governance documentation, right? So there are things that are called out as TSC responsibilities and whatnot, but like when in doubt, it falls back on steering. Yeah, and um, the I don't think this has been especially well defined uh, in the past. I think that we have an opportunity while we're talking about this to clarify that. Um, it's sort of entangled, you know, with the question uh, that I think sort of surfaces this into this conversation around the um, around the scope. And how will we add things to the scope? Um, this is probably a good opportunity for us to make that crystal clear to ourselves. In in terms of like, um, you know, association, club, society, 
constitutions that I've seen over time. The most common pattern is that you have a, sorry, the most common pattern you have is like a management committee that has, you know, all the powers delegated to it. And then it in turn sort of parcels its power out um, through a sort of a, a regulatory framework. Um, what's interesting about the effectively it's a constitution um, that we have is that the TAC is named at the top level and it has an independent sort of head of power in that document. The question is what I'm hearing, uh -oh, what I'm hearing from Ahmed is like whether the steering committee has a head of power that allows it to make independent decisions that bind on, on everyone or whether it is, as he said, merely just advisory or whether it is, as Matt says, um, having an independent head of power and then an implicit residual power to deal with anything that TOC doesn't. Um, I would argue that what we're sort of dealing with at the moment is a question of election and composition of the steering committee, which is, I think, the thing that's caused the most stem and drum. Um, and I think we can deal with that. And I think then we should also look at answering these constitutional questions of what are the heads of power? Is power residual or not? Um, is it delegated or not? You know, from steering down to TOC or is TOC dependent? And we should we should map those out. We should sort those out. Yeah. Um, Dr. Max, uh, I see that you put a question into chat. Would you care to uh, describe that one verbally? It says he just left, uh, but maybe I'll read it out loud if that's helpful. Uh, the first question, oh no, it's scrolling up. The first question is, what is the ultimate goal for SC committee composition? Um, I'd assume to always be diversified. If yes, then rules should incentivize that in any, any other salient goals. Yeah, this new interface for meeting is terrible because I always go with that red button to unmute. And then of course- <laughs> Oh <I'm>... no. <laughs> there you go. So I I mean, thank you Brenda for, for reading it. I, what, I'm, what I'm wondering is like, so what, what are the main goal? Because I, I agree that you know, making the steering committee technical is important, but Vida's point is also very good. You want people that actually want to spend the time doing it. So I always wondered, what's the goal for, you know, the changes? And I think the diversification, avoiding one company to have a lot of power and things like this are the important things. And if that's the goal, then, you know, it doesn't matter who's there. We should just try to achieve that goal. So in other words, like we don't want, out of the five seats, let's say there's five seats that three of them come from one company, whether or not those people are brilliant, uh, it doesn't matter because they'll, they would have too many, too much power, right? So I think if we identify that, those goals, then, you know, we should try to just go there. That's just my opinion. Uh, and then the second one, which is important is how do we ensure that the changes that you're proposing at some point get in, because it's not clear who has that authority? Because somebody has to merge that PR. Um, how is that decided? So anyways, that's all. Uh, I think the second one is probably easier to answer than the first, uh, at least in terms of wall clock time needed. So what I'd expect is that uh, we arrive at a consensus on steering uh, or, or we have a vote and we merge or we don't merge the PR. And that's how we consider it to be adopted or not. Um, the, the, the first question is a little bit more detailed, let's say. Uh, so uh, let me do my best to articulate um, my own opinions representing Red Hat. Uh, and maybe Michael uh, and Brenda can chime in with their own opinions on the subject. So uh, I think the, the, the first one to kind of Order them is individual participation over uh, vendor participation um, in the sense that it is important that individuals earn these seats on steering uh, based on their contributions to the community. Uh, and it's important that individuals earn them uh, and that they, they stay with individuals um, because that is what provides continuity and that is what provides engagement with the community. I see it as being very important uh, that people feel that the project is governed in a way that is representative of the community. 
So that individual involvement is very important to that. Individuals demonstrate the things that make them eligible and make them desirable to be part of steering by the work they do in the community. Um, after that layer, there's the question of uh, there's the question of uh, having uh, having a balance of power, and uh, that's where the the vendor majority principle comes in. And what we have in the proposal now is that uh, I think it I think it says no more than two seats uh, occupied on steering by employees of the same vendor, um, and that is to ensure that. Uh, that no vendor exerts an outsized uh, uh, control over things at the steering level, um, and that steering decisions uh, are are made by uh, I don't know the exact right word, but that they have to to have uh, buy in from more than one one vendor, basically. And I think that's sort of my gut summary. Brenda, Michael, I'm not sure if, if you want to add anything to that. No, I, I think you captured it well. It, it's about the contributions of people who want to be on the SC, and it's about making sure there is no dictatorship by a single entity. Yeah, I think, I think for me, it's um, a lot of around the responsibility of steering is like, growing and evolving this community. And there, there's a ton we can do there. Um, and I think in order to, you know, do that role effectively, you need to um, understand like the nitty gritty details of the community, like what's working, what's not working with our current uh, community structure and et cetera. Um, so that's why I feel pretty strongly about seats being earned by individuals. Um, in terms of Diversity, I think we can all hopefully agree that that's important. Like that's how good community projects succeed if we have a diversity of thoughts. So that's just kind of my thinking behind that. Um, Ashley, I see that you had a couple questions in chat and I wanna make sure that we're surfacing the stuff from chat. Did you wanna say anything uh, over the audio? Uh, yeah, I can do. Uh... So I suppose what I'm wondering, what's not really clear to me is whether having separate groups for the steering committee and the TOC is based on authority or ability. Like, I don't know if it's, if it's a thing where we're having another layer of people to approve things or sign things off. If that's the case, I kind of agree with Doug in that I'm not sure we're big enough to need kind of two whole separate layers of that. And if it's more of an ability thing, uh, like I said in the chat, I'm not sure why we wouldn't just expand the TOC to have the folks who would have made up the steering committee be part of that. Um, uh, not to put you on the spot, Ashley, but uh, um, so I wonder, aside from the, the, the question I heard from you, which is really about does there need to be a distinct TOC uh, versus steering, like modular that detail. Um, how does it seem otherwise? Yeah, other than that, I have no real strong opinions. Uh, because once that question's answered, I guess, like, one thing I kind of wonder about, I suppose, is like the communication between the steering committee and the TOC and how all of that would work and what kind of the processes would be for that stuff. But I don't have any real feelings about it otherwise. Yeah. Um, Doug, I think you also had content that went into the chat. Oh, it was it was what Ashley gave voice to. Did you want to uh, put any extra content around that? No, just to be clear, the reason I'm mentioning this stuff is simply because um, I, I don't like extra process, extra bureaucracy and stuff. And I just don't feel like we're that big of a group to, to warrant it. And I'd like to, to keep most of those discussions to a minimum as possible and just focus on the code. And one way to do that is to reduce layers. So that's the, that's the reason motivation here. It's not because I think something's necessarily wrong. It's just, I, like, I just like thin processes. Get it, yeah. Um... Let's see, I'm just, I'm going through the chat. Um, Tiago, 
uh, you had a comment there. Did you want to speak that? And I'm, I hope that I'm pronouncing your, your name correctly. I don't think Tiago is there. Okay. The comment was uh, the K native tech will change the way we deliver and maintain solutions. Um, I'm not quite sure how to parse this, uh, the rest of this, so maybe we can just move on. Um, Scott, you had a had a question in the chat. Did you want to did you want to add that in the audio? Yeah, sure. I was, I was, you know, an observation is if a TOC seat is coveted, uh, but I've I've also seen that the, there's at least one seat that's been empty for the last six months or more, maybe more like a year. Is there any reason? What and what does that say about the project? Uh, I think only a, a Google employee can answer that. It's a Google seat. I think that's one of the advantages of the changes being proposed, actually, is that by changing the formulation from seats being held by vendors to seats being held by individuals and adding machinery that allows individuals to be pushed up um, based on election results, that, that that won't happen again, hopefully. I know April couldn't make it today, but maybe I'll point to Alex or Ron who seem to be here. Speaking for myself, I don't have the context on why that seat has been empty as long as it has as a very new committee member. Um, so I, I don't feel like I could answer that question. You want to introduce yourself while you're here? I just realized we skipped introductions. Sorry about that. Sure. I think somebody proposed that we do that after this discussion end, uh, but perhaps we'll take a little interlude for introductions. Hi, everybody. My name is Alex Nicolau. I'm an edge director uh, at Google. Um, I'm responsible for the eventing uh, team within the Knative project. And I'm Ron of Noor, uh, product manager at Google. Uh, responsible for eventing and cloud run for Anthos. Cool, welcome. Thanks, all. All right, it looks like we don't have an answer to Scott's question, so maybe we can move on to any other questions if there are any. Maybe a question for um, the folks who created the pull request. Do you have a timeline in mind about by what by when you would want that pull request to reach a conclusion? Are we talking about a week or two? Are we talking about six more months of waiting? Or um, let's put a pin in that one real quick. I saw that someone asked for introductions uh, from the rest of steering. So uh, maybe we can just do that real quick. Uh, I'm Paul Mori. I'm an engineer at Red Hat and uh, lead our serverless engineering team representing Red Hat on steering. Hey, I'm Brenda. Uh, I represent VMware on steering. Um, I lead up, uh, we're trying to figure out our team name, but uh, I lead up uh, the engineering team that focuses on Knative at VMware. Hello, I'm Michael Berendt, um, representing IBM and responsible for the technical strategy around server that's there. Um, <clears throat> so Ahmed, you, uh, I think 
the question that I heard, I want to just make sure I heard it correctly. Is like, what's the do, the timeline for finalizing uh, the steering composition mechanics? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, I think it's really important uh, to to finalize it as soon as possible uh, because it's something that's been in the air for quite a while. Um, I don't know if we're ready to finalize uh, uh, anything now, are we? Why don't we? So certainly I'm not ready. The way this came to light, I think, is I saw in some agenda doc or some email, a note from Brenda that wasn't getting any traction about how we should close this issue. Uh, and I brought it up as an agenda for the joint steering TOC meeting that very day. And then also as an agenda item for the steering committee uh, that same week. And we started having some discussions. Uh, Paul, Brenda and I uh, uh, sort of went off as a splinter of the steering committee to go and try to put together uh, a bunch of thoughts around this. Um, it became pretty clear that we were coming at it from very different angles in our discussion. Um, and so uh, unfortunately, just after that, I went off on two weeks vacation and I'm just back from my two weeks vacation and digging out of a small backlog of a, a few thousand emails. Uh, and here I am at the public meeting having this discussion. So the, the, I think Paul was care careful to clarify that this proposal didn't come from steering committee, but came from a subgroup of it. And there'll be, uh, I'll, I think a need for a lot more discussion and understanding of the proposal and its intent and its impact before we could actually close on, on the decision. Um, but the, to try to go back to Ahmed's question, you know, the reason uh, this is a topic of discussion right now is because Brenda had raised it and it seems stillborn and I tried to get it to have some discussion and that initiated sort of a fresh round of uh, conversation around it. Um, from my point of view, some of the opinions here are really interesting. It's always good to hear everybody's perspective. Uh, the existing charter as it's written, bearing in mind I'm coming into it as an outsider, so I'm not super familiar with how this has operated for this group in the past. It seems quite clear that steering uh, has delegated power to the TOC, and the TOC is an electric body that runs the project, and yet I hear a lot of questions uh, from the audience about whether TOC really has that power or not, or whether steering is advisory or not. Um, these things seem to be spelled out quite plainly in black and white in the existing charter to me. So figuring out how to clarify that so that we understand how it is that steering parcels out its power and how those powers are being executed in practice is something that I guess I need more context on. I think Jacques had said earlier in the meeting that typically this is how it's done. You have an executive body that uh, delegates its power out to the sub-bodies, and that looks like exactly the structure that's currently in place. Yeah, my my observation there was that, that that was a typical structure. What was interesting about this one was that the TOC is a constitutional body rather than a regulatory body. Like it, it, it flowed from the structure of the documents that define the project governments rather than from a decision by the steering committee. Uh, and I think that's where a lot of the sort of the, the confusion and, and and continuing debate comes from is that it has a constitutional standing. So uh, I, I think we need to, to bring uh, this matter to a close in relatively short order. We're going to have a public steering meeting next month. Um, I, I think that uh, it's pretty clear to me that the community is very interested in getting uh, clear resolution to this matter. Um, I would feel very comfortable with you all in the community holding us to make a decision in the public meeting next month. Um, how does that sound to everybody? I think if, if, if that did not happen personally, that would give me a red sign on the health of this discussion and the project future. So if things are on a good path, then th that sounds reasonable. Otherwise, I would be worried. I think maybe so, 
comments. I think maybe Sorry, to shed ahead. some light on why I'm so eager to make progress on this issue. I think it's crazy that the NSG opened in 2019 and it's not closed. Like that, that is unacceptable <laughs> in my head, very candidly speaking. So I, I would honestly prefer to make a decision and progress on this sooner than a month from now. That, that's kind of my take. Um, I, I think, you know, from our last community meeting to giving everyone a heads up, like this has been a topic, a sore topic for a long time already. Um, so I think maybe my question is like, what is a more reasonable time frame than a month from now? Because that seems kind of a little bit insane to be very honest. <laughs> Yeah, so we can we can meet in public uh, whenever we want. There's no reason that we have to wait a month. How about next week? Yeah, I, I like the idea of going faster rather than slower. Um, people who who have a how do I say this right? <laughs> people who have the most or people who should have the most voice in this should already understand what's been going on because they're part of the community. If people need more time than a week because they need to gather the information, then chances are they're not part of the community and they, and they shouldn't be really influencing our decision. I'm liking a week. I think that's a good idea, Brenda. Yep, makes sense to me. Hmm. I think a week is a laudable goal, but probably an unrealistic one. Can uh, you expand on that? What do you mean? Or why do you think it's unreasonable? Um, well, I mean, I'm not clear on why this issue has been open since 2019. Uh, but given that the last action I took before vacation was to try to up the priority of this and get us to take action, uh, you know, I, I'm in favor of trying to bring this to closure, uh, but it's surprising to me that we would go from having an issue open since 2019 that's obviously been languishing and not being being addressed um, to, oh, we can solve it in a week because someone put up a pull request that we know doesn't have, uh, you know, any discussion at steering prior to this meeting. Well, we're meeting here and steering now. Um, I, uh, I must say, it, I think that we owe the community that has been working to build this project a resolution on this. Um, Paul, I would agree with that, that we owe taking something that, as Brenda put, has been languishing for eight, nine months, maybe even longer, we, we should bring it to closure. It's just, that is a little, a little longer than it should be. Um, I want to make sure that we get it right. And so I've been listening careful, carefully, trying to make sure that I understand what's going on because I, yeah, I'm, I too am very new to the community and want to be careful with the changes we make. So my, my desire is to just make sure we, we think through clearly and I'm just trying to understand that's all. Yes, and, and to shed some light on that, why it has been t not 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 been closed yet over the last eight nine months is, I think, not because the topic is complex. It's mm -hmm. just because it didn't have enough focus um, so far to to get it done in in short order. So so good. We have focus on it now. Let's go understand all the details work through it just like any other design doc and, and get it done. Uh, but I think, you know, putting an arbitrary deadline on it, well, I, I look in good, in good faith, I want to focus on it and, and get it resolved. Uh, putting a, a one week, one month deadline, I, I think is somewhat arbitrary. I think Matt's chat comment resonates a lot with me. I think this actually has been an open issue for longer than when I raised it. When I raised it, it was just re-raising it again uh, out sure. of the many times I've raised it. Um, 
So I, I think maybe I can so as, as, far as, I know, Brenda, as far as I would know, Brenda, the time that you raised it was the first time that you raised it since I was on committee. And that week I took action and spent two hours with you and Paul discussing it on video chat. We would need to record those meetings and use that record to create meeting notes that we would have a common understanding of our two hours worth of discussion. I haven't seen the meeting notes yet. I don't yet have access to the videos. I'm trying to make progress. I can't give you more than the two hours I gave that week. I then went on vacation for two weeks and now I'm in this meeting. So it's not, I don't believe that I'm not making an effort to push this ahead as fast as I can. As soon as I saw you raise the issue and it get no traction. So the effort is going in. I don't think, uh, so we, we have to find a way to agree on how we're gonna do this. So that means that we need to agree when we're going to, when we're going to have a resolution one way or the other. Um, I, I am not comfortable with an open-ended situation because I have been on steering for quite a while and I feel like I'm in a position where I owe a debt that's overdue. So for me to feel comfortable, we have to have a time that we agree that we're going to have a decision by. I don't know how anybody else feels about that. Brenda, am I calling you opinions on that? No, I think we are, we are all in agreement. I mean, it, this has been, if you really go back to the origins of this question, it's probably more than a year, more, one and a half years, maybe even two, I don't know exactly anymore. But it's been around for a long, long time. And I think for, for this project to move forward in a healthy state, um, we need to get this resolved very soon. Um, so, uh, oh. Go ahead, Vilay, sorry. No, I was going to go and say I would like to understand the diff between why uh, we think this is or why is this so much more complicated than the TOC where uh, we the community basically said we would like X, Y and Z and we decided fairly quickly. So uh, perhaps we can go ahead and try to understand wh why this issue is uh, so much more complicated and maybe focus on addressing those questions so that we can focus on, on, on them in a, in a timely manner. And, and as far as um, putting a timeline in there, um, we, I, I mean, even when I was in TLC and, 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 and whatnot, we were asking for uh, deadlines and timelines, like we need to make some progress and so forth on that several, several times. And the answer always was, we'll deal with it. So I do think that we need to go ahead and put some uh, deadlines uh, to ensure that uh, uh, measurable progress is being made. And um, if there are any ways that uh, the community can help with this in lieu of the, just uh, commenting on the PR and whatnot, uh, how do we help folks uh, to get data that might be missing? Um, I would say the, the participation in the meeting today and on the PR is really, really helpful. Um, that's, that's probably the best thing that, that I can think of at the moment. Um, what I'm what I'm left with in the remaining ten minutes of this meeting is, uh, when are we going to close this? So Vile kind of stole a little of my thunder there, and I apologize. Like I said, in being a call, I'm not caught up on uh, all the activity on that particular PR, so I don't know for sure whether Ron or Alex or anybody else from from Google had a chance to comment on there. But to me, one of those two guys on the call said, you know, like any PR, let's discuss it and all the other stuff. Well. Let's get some activity in the PR itself from the Google side to understand what specific things in the PR they have concerns with um, and out there relatively quickly because without hearing comments in the PR itself, it's very, we're, we're kind of talking the abstract and I'd rather see more concrete um, commentary on the issue, on, I'm sorry, on the PR directly. Yeah, and, and, and I think we, we, we need to nail down the target date we are shooting for. It, 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 like Paul said, we, we can't have it open-ended anymore. So what's a reasonable date to bring this to uh, resolution? 
I think your original proposal of before the next scheduled public steering is a good deadline. And that doesn't mean we can't conclude this before then, but it does mean that if we come to the next public steering and this is not closed, then that would be a failure. I, uh, I think that I'd prefer to have the remaining discussion be done publicly. Uh, I, I really do not uh, like being in situations where we say we're going to do something and we disappear and nothing materializes. So I think for me to feel comfortable personally that we need to do the remaining talk in public. Michael, Brenda, anybody else opinions about that? Yeah, plus one. I, I think there is nothing to hide here. Yeah, I think it's more around the community understanding what our thought process is with whatever we do come to. So it's important to just be transparent about this. Stuff. So I would be happy to have another public meeting next week. Um, I think a uh, uh, public meeting a month from now is a great deadline to bring it to a resolution. I, I guess I didn't really hear a uh, disagreement on that. Um, can we agree that we'll continue this in public next week? I see a plus one from Brenda. Michael, Alex, Ron, plus how one. about you guys? Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't actually think it's a helpful thing to to go from a steering committee that's operated in private for the entire life of the project to bringing this issue as a thing that requires all public meetings in the future. But if that's uh, what all the other steering committee members want, you know, I can I can live with that. I think it's it seems to me to be unhelpful to use up sixty three people's time to hash through a bunch of variations that will need many hours of discussion. It will be optional for folks, right? So folks can join if they are interested in this topic. Well, but that but also yeah. goes back to the asynchronous nature of commenting on the PR, right? We shouldn't, I, to be honest, I'd be a little sad if between now and next week, there aren't any comments on the PR about why it's a bad idea, right? If, you, if we get those comments in the PR itself, maybe we could do some adjusted wording to make people happy with it. But not hearing anything on the negative side until next week is isn't very productive to me. We need to work. Yeah, yeah. And, and and I I think it's it's also fair to have some some working sessions in between. Like we we don't have to constrain it to just one hour per week. That might hold up progress as well. So if needed, let's have working sessions in between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm game to do any number of working sessions, um, and. Uh, let me just take a moment to boost Evan's comment uh, from the chat, uh, which rings true to me, unless, Evan, you'd prefer to say that on the audio. No, I'm just here in chat. Yeah, the, uh, the, um, the comment was that uh, the number of people here is a reflection of how interested people are. And I think that is absolutely spot on. This is a very, very important issue to our community. So let's uh, let's we've we've got a few minutes here remaining. Let's close this out. Um, in the absence of any uh, anyone saying otherwise, like I'll expect that we'll uh, have a public public meeting next week uh, where we can continue this. Um, if, if folks are interested in a working session. Um, absolutely, like feel free to indicate uh, that you'd like to do it sooner. Uh, here or uh, we'll we'll call for it in um, in the PR too. And Victor, uh, your your comment is noted about overlapping with um, with other uh, working groups. I'm sure that we can do something about that, but it was scheduled in this time because this is our normal steering time on Wednesday. Apologies for the overlap. Okay, is that something everyone can live with?
Speak now or hold your peace. All righty. Then let's continue the chat on GitHub. All right. Thanks all for joining. This was a good turnout. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See everybody. <laughs>